This video is brought to you by NordVPN. It's been made clear that this year is likely going to be an election year. There's been much discussion, especially on this channel, about the polls and what we should expect to happen. Will the polls hold and see Labour take power? Will Sunak be kicked out of office? And to some extent, the media has also focused on some other parties, with the potential collapse of the SNP in Scotland and a possible uptick in Lib Dem seats often discussed. However, one of the smaller parties that has failed to really make their mark are the Greens, who are currently polling at around 5%. In a sense, this is a bit surprising, given the ever-increasing salience of climate issues and the fact that Labour have moved significantly right under Starmer, and are generally considered a bit boring, you might expect a more radical left-wing party like the Greens to be doing a bit better. So in this video, we're going to take a look at how the Greens are doing right now, why they're not doing all that well in the headline polls, and whether this could change as the election nears. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. Now, it's worth starting this video by looking at the state of the Green Party in the UK right now. The Greens currently have only one MP in the House of Commons, their former leader, Caroline Lucas. However, to suggest that this is their only achievement would be disingenuous. There are also 766 Green councillors across England and Wales, with the Greens in overall control of one council, Mid Suffolk, and in coalition with other parties in many others. They also have seven seats in the Scottish Parliament and work closely with the SNP in the Scottish Government. The Greens are hoping, though, that they can increase their share of MPs in Parliament at the upcoming election, and have announced that they'll be targeting four seats. Primarily, they're aiming to try and retain Brighton Pavilion, the only constituency they currently hold. This could be tricky, though, as the incumbent Green MP Caroline Lucas is stepping down at the next election. Lucas is an absolute titan in the Green Party. She's incredibly popular, been an MP since 2010, and led the party from 2008 to 2012. In fact, her majority has increased at every election since, reaching a phenomenal 19,940 votes in 2019. Now, this does give her successor, former Green co-leader Sean Berry, a big boost. However, it's worth mentioning that Labour appear to be throwing a lot at Brighton, and have selected award-winning music producer Tom Gray, someone who has lived in Brighton since 1999, to contest the election. A poll from mid-2023 actually showed Labour ahead of the Greens in Brighton, at 32.7% against the Greens' 28.4%. Now, obviously, this was just one poll from half a year ago, but there are other indications that Labour is a real challenger here. At last year's local elections, for instance, Labour won a majority in Brighton for the first time since 1999, usurping a Green-led administration that had been in power since 2020. The Greens, on the other hand, won just seven of the 54 council seats, its worst result since 2003. One of the issues for the Greens in Brighton is that the previous Green-led council had a questionable track record. Locals complained about dirty streets and inconsistent bin collection, and some of the Greens' new anti-car measures faced stiff resistance. So you get the point. Labour are coming into 2024 on the back of an election victory in 2023. A strong candidate, a strong position in the national polls, and with the incumbent Caroline Lucas out of the way. It's very possible, then, that Labour could take the Greens' only seat in Westminster. The Greens could, though, take other seats. They're targeting specifically three other seats. Bristol Central, a new constituency created in the recent Boundary Review, Waveney Valley, also a new constituency, and North Herefordshire. As things stand, it looks as though Bristol might be the only achievable seat of these three. While Labour have consistently held other Bristol constituencies for the last few general elections, electoral calculus gives the Greens an ever so slight edge over Labour here, with a 52% chance of winning, compared to Labour's 48%. Waveney Valley, on the other hand, doesn't seem to have the same odds of going green. Its predecessor constituency was held by the Tories, with Labour in second place. In 2019, the Greens garnered only 5.3% of the vote. 
Now, it's true that the Greens picked up a number of councillors in the 2023 council elections, but it's unlikely that this is a strong enough indication that they will be able to overturn the Tory majority. Similarly, North Herefordshire has seen a strong-ish Green vote in recent years, but the idea that they'll be able to overturn the Tory majority there seems unlikely. All in all, it looks like the best-case scenario for the Greens is that they retain Brighton and win Bristol, but neither of these are guaranteed. This all raises the question, why aren't the Greens doing better, given the ever-increasing salience of climate issues and Labour's apparent shortcomings? Well, as we mentioned a second ago, they don't have a great record in local government, especially in Brighton. But perhaps the main reason is that the Greens have been struggling with some pretty bitter internal divisions recently, the most notable being that of trans issues. In fact, over the past few years, the Green Party Women's Group, a subgroup within the Green Party and the Green Party leadership, have gone to battle over the party's position on transgender issues, with the GWP trying to establish an amendment to the party constitution that outlined biological sex as a basis for women's rights. The current leadership is generally more sympathetic to trans issues and rights, and the party actually cut ties with the Green Party Women Group in early December over their gender-critical views. Infighting is never a good look for a party, and it apparently hasn't helped the Greens. Infighting has also prevented the Greens' new leadership from establishing an effective public profile. While Caroline Lucas was a well-known figure in the UK, Barely anyone has heard of their new leaders, or any other Green politician for that matter, to the extent that YouGov doesn't even include them in their list of notable public figures when polling. The only other Green politician they do include is former co-leader Sean Berry, but even then, only 25% of the public knows who she is. Nonetheless, it's probably too early to rule the Greens out completely, and it's entirely possible that, as the election nears and campaigning accelerates, the Greens might well be able to turn their fortunes around. A lot will depend on the strength of Labour's campaign, and whether the Greens are able to keep their bubbling issue of transgender rights from causing any further internal party divisions. All in all, it's possible that 2024 could be the Greens' year, but it's also possible that it could be the year that they're removed from Parliament entirely. Whatever the future may hold, it will always be important to keep yourself safe online. Fortunately, when it comes to your digital safety, NordVPN has your back. It's an unfortunate reality that online scams and phishing attacks are on the rise, with us constantly bombarded by annoying notifications and emails that we forgot we even signed up to. It's easy to click the wrong link. One seemingly innocent link can compromise security and bring things crashing down. With the protection of NordVPN though, you can use their threat protection feature to identify potentially suspicious links. Even if you reached a suspicious website, NordVPN's data encryption tools would protect you and your data against a number of other attacks, such as malicious man-in-the-middle breaches. But if things do go wrong, NordVPN's dark web monitoring is always scanning for your compromised details across the entire internet, and can even notify you before you even notice anything's gone wrong. So if you want to securely connect to that free Wi-Fi at your local coffee shop without worrying about someone trying to take a peek at your personal data, you can sign up for a two-year plan with a massive discount and four months free at nordvpn.com forward slash TLDR. We've been told that sometimes our viewers just open a new tab and type in the URL themselves, and while we're certainly glad that you're using the service, you only get the discount and support the channel through that link. So if you wish to get the discount and support independent journalism further, make sure you sign up using our link. That's nordvpn.com forward slash TLDR. Thanks for your support.